how you doing guys my name is blacklight and today i got another map breakdown for you for pvp and this time we're doing rusted lands brace yourselves though because this map's a little bit more complicated to deal with and there's a lot more spawns so to help out with clarity i have brought some visuals along to help me out visuals meet viewers viewers meet visuals all right now that you're acquainted let's get on with this as we go on the visual will be updated and then at the very end you will have an overview of all the spawns and everything about the map so as for the best gun setup on this map, I've become pretty partial to scout rifles recently. Scout rifles and shotguns usually go pretty well together. Uh, you know, really though, it matters on your personal preference, whatever you feel most comfortable with, and it also depends on your subclass. But if you can't decide, let's try scout rifles and shotguns. I think they work pretty well on this map, and then heavy is really just preference. As for our opening routes, when spawning on A side, I like to burst out of the gates and rush towards C and use a cone grenade like Spike, Trip Mine, or Lightning, toss it on the back wall, and that can usually get me a few kills or even four. And generally when you're doing this route, you don't want to hop over the water container. Generally, you want to go more towards the left and then jump over from that side so you don't get sniped out of the air while you're on top of the water container. Now if you're spawning on C side, there's a couple things you can do. So one, you can try and pick off the people that are trying to do that A rush route that I just told you. But also a lot of people don't expect this is you can rush straight to A. So what you do is you cut straight through the underground area and come right up under A. And then you can toss a cone grenade on the back wall and it'll do similar effects to as if it were on C. If you run there with another person on your team, you're going to clear out that area 9 times out of 10. Works really well. By yourself, it can be a little bit iffy and difficult to do. But if you uh, are feeling like there's too many people there, you can throw a grenade in there and then cut around to the right side and kind of shoot in through that door. I'd say about half the time this works really well and you're a hero for all of your team. And the other half of the time you either stall them or you just flat out die and your team spits on your corpse. So you can either pick off the rushers or you can be the rusher. Learning the spawns is the absolute best thing you can do to get better at PvP. Knowing where the enemies are, even when they're not on your radar, is what's going to really improve your game. So for the A side spawns, we've got two in particular that are very heavily weighted, and those are going to be here and here. Now these are going to be the hardest to flip where people are going to be spawning most of the time on A side. Then we've got three spawns that are more situational and less consistent for when your team is pressuring the enemy team and pushing them back into C, but the spawns haven't flipped yet. Or the spawns are in the process of flipping. Now those are going to be here, here and here. So this is where the enemies will be spawning while you're controlling C or C and B, so take note of particularly the heavily weighted spawns because the other ones are more transitional and you're not really going to be right up on those people as they're spawning, but with the heavily weighted spawns you can pretty consistently hold down the water tower area and people just keep coming around that corner and you can pick them off with a scout rifle or a sniper or whatever you're using. And you know what, feel free to correct me on calling that thing a water tower, water container, whatever the heck it is, that's, that's what I'm calling it, that's what it looks like I think, so just, you know, it's just to get the point across, help you guys understand. You know what I mean, don't look at me like that. And while we're on the topic of that water container area, let's talk about one more spawn point located here. And this one's between A and C I'd say, and it's the most transitional spawn point for if teams are pressuring B. So if one team is pressuring B really hard and they're not as much at their home flag, it's going to flip people here and so they can go and take the enemy's home flag. And while we're on the topic of transitioning, let's talk about the seaside spawns. So again, we have two heavily weighted spawns to start off with, which are going to be here and here. And these spawns are going to be the most consistent, the hardest to flip, people are going to be spawning there, usually even if you're going for C. I would say that second spawn is even more heavily weighted. They will spawn people there all the time. Even if you are capping C flag, people are going to be there. So don't take your eyes off that side. People are going to keep coming from that way. Unless they decide to run through the tunnel and come from B direction. So, you know, that can happen. But I'm just here to tell you about the spawns, not perfectly predict every enemy's movements. Then again, we have three more less heavily weighted spawns, but they're actually still pretty heavily weighted because of Seaside being kind of boxed in, in this little back corner. So they, they can take the liberty of spawning people there a pretty large amount of time. And those spawns are going to be here, here, and here. And wherever they spawn depends on which flag you're pressuring. If you're pressuring C, it's going to push them more toward the B side spawns. If you're pressuring B, it's going to push them more towards the C side spawns. And finally, we have the B side spawns. And there's going to be three of them, which are here, here, and here. 
nothing too special about these. Obviously, people are going to be spawning there if they're controlling more of the B side of the map. None are really more heavily weighted than the others. It's just important that you know where they are. And those are all of the rusted land spawns. So, based on those spawn points, which flags are going to be the best to hold down? I'd say C and B because those two heavily weighted A spawns make it so that people either have to come up the stairs to come out of A, which you can see from the middle half of the map, or they have to go at, come out at the water container, which you can also see that area if you're standing up on that little metal walkway near the side of C. So since A side is just so open, you got plenty of lines of sight to see into there from the middle half of the map and it just makes it easy to control. So if you learn these spawns and really master them, you should be able to know where people are coming from at most times, and you should get pretty good at rusted lands. So that's it guys, hope you enjoyed, and see you later. And if you wanna check out my channel, link in the description below.